locked in channel yeah <laughs> i don't know if you like that um i'm kind of frustrated because i literally recorded a whole video hours ago with carl and um we had on our lamp and the lamp made the footage fuzzy for some strange reason and then my son has been crying and breastfeeding and crying yeah so i'm just looking at him but he's fine he's just being my son okay is he okay mm -hmm. and it's just been so hard to get ready to even try and record a video but i said i want to be um consistent because i said to you guys wednesdays and sundays and now carl has to go for a cycle so he can't be in the video which means it's just me but um yeah you guys can keep me company so it's fine and um my son is literally laying in his snooze pod and but like google gooing and garring and waking back up so i might have to just keep breastfeeding in between but that's the life of a new mom yeah. but yeah so let's start because i want to try and do this when we recorded it before it was literally 40 minutes and yeah i'm trying to cut that down and if you are new to my channel i'm cassie loco and my husband is normally with me who's car loco and we've just had our first baby we started this channel in july 2016 um with a vlog no, we didn't do a vlog. We a vlog. We started this channel because we got married and our wedding literally went viral. And um, yeah, you might have seen it. There was um, videos of us dancing um, and we had like ballerinas. We danced like a gospel song. And yeah, it was just great. And there's a picture of us where we're kissing, might insert in through like a taxi door or something like that. Um, but yeah, so if you are new to my channel, subscribe. What are you waiting for right now? Um, you know, press the notification button, whatever you have to do, just do it. Subscribe, be part of the family because we're literally on a journey and we're on a journey together. So, on Wednesdays, I think I'll do my main videos, and on Sundays, the vlogs that's what I'm thinking. Wow. Anyway, let's get into it. So, it was a Sunday, and um, literally that day, I had been wearing, I had decided to wear the sliders that um, I got when my son was born just before my son was born i got sliders that literally said welcoming baby locker in july even though i had them in june in the end but it said welcoming baby locker in july so i literally put those sliders on and i decided to match my um eye makeup with my sliders i just looked really silly that day and not only did i look really silly i was really hot and i it was like probably like 25 degrees i was actually walking to church the journey that usually takes eight minutes took me about 45 I got to church and usually I'm quite active even though I've been pregnant I'll be dancing or but I sat there and I was just tired and it was like I was ready in my head I was like you know what if I have the baby today if I have the baby tomorrow it's fine I'm ready yeah. after church we ended up going to like an event like a lip sync kind of event and Carl was performing there and um I just start, I started dancing and everyone was like listen Cass, you're gonna induce your labor, just relax, chill out. But I was shakuing, I couldn't help it. I was literally on the dance floor, out that hurt. Yeah, on the dance floor, like giving it. And so everyone was like, Have you sorted out like, your baby bag, hospital bag? And I was like, No, um, I haven't completed it. And it was like, You know what? From your nine months, you should have should have it and literally everywhere you go take it with you and your orange book so I was like and the next day so that was a Sunday so the next day on a Monday I literally um slept the whole day I just felt my house is hot number one it's got a tin roof so it's boiling and I just felt like oh I can't do anything today um but then when it got to near the evening I was just feeling so hot so tired and um, I saw my friend had posted on Instagram, my friend Adrian, the chef of life, the interior designer of life, um, that she'd cooked ackee and saltfish and dumplings, hard food, Cassandra, Jamaican, my favourite. So I literally got into the, um, an Uber, went to her house, and yeah, man, she fed me, gave me watermelon, ackee and saltfish, dumpling, we was watching a show, but the ackee and saltfish was hot. And I remember people saying that you can, if you eat hot food, you can reduce your labour. But again i was like oh come on man these are just fairy tales so i got in the car uber back and as i got home i just started to have like light pains and i just went to sleep because i was in a bit of pain and then i just kept feeling like waves like little like little how can i little period pain when i woke up the next morning i was like i knew that day 
was supposed to be my antenatal class they have the antenatal class on different days but me and Carl wasn't able to make it so I was like I'm gonna go on that day but when I because I was still having those light pure pains I was like I don't know if I'll be able to sit through that so I called um, the hospital and I told them what was happening and they were like um, yeah you're probably in early labor but early labor means that you could cut you could basically have the baby within two weeks from now like it doesn't mean anything yeah you might be feeling this way but it's probably not so I let Carl know and then we decided that um, I decided that you know what I'm not gonna go to antenatal because I can't be, be asked with that feeling but what I'll do is I watch antenatal class online so I literally watch come on we're millennials I literally watch the antenatal class online and I called my friend Louise and I was like Louise I haven't sorted out the hospital bag let's do it so she took us under school so I had woken up for like 5 a.m she took us under school and then I told her like how I was feeling and she again was like oh she's had a child she was like yeah it's probably just gonna go and come back it happens so she was like yeah she'll come and get me so she came and got me and we went to Wandsworth and Carlos came with us and we went to Primark to get some nighties because I needed a nightie and some you know slippers and a dressing gown and stuff like that and I was literally there but then the pains were getting a bit more frequent and just the day before my friend had said to me um I know you're not it's not your time but this app I, it came in handy when my friend had her baby and um it's a contraction app so as I was feeling those pains and they were saying it was contractions I started putting them into the app every time I had them and how long they were and they were 15 minutes apart and they were lasting about one minute 30 seconds so anyway doing what I'm doing literally I got some bubble tea my favorite with tapioca in the bottom having conversation and I went to Greg's to get um I got a sausage roll from Greg's and um I didn't eat it straight away so when we got back to Louise's house after doing our shopping I ate the sausage roll and that the contraction stopped so I was like ha! hunger pains like you know like that I was thinking yeah it was just hungry hungry pains so I set a bath thinking that you know I was having contractions but when I ate the sausage I was fine so got into the bath and came out of the bath and then Carl was like do you want to go and eat with my mum because my mum wants to go to eat but I had message one of my best Instagram friends Dina and I was like Dina um how I was feeling she was like you know what just rest because if it is labor you need your energy but I was in my head I was thinking it's not labor but you know what okay let me rest so, and then my friend was actually gonna cook chicken and potatoes so I was like you know what I'll season the chicken and she was like you sure I was like yeah I'm having these um I'll season the chicken and I, as I was that's it as I was seasoning the chicken I got a sharp pain again and I was like oh and I had been messaging my friends and they're all like oh so you're having pains but I think okay what a lot of people I think a lot of people think that I'm an exaggerator put it that way and a lot of people think that I can't handle pain and I can't go through things and I think they think I'm a baby so everyone was kind of like you know when people are talking to you but they're like they're kind of acting like they don't they're like they, they hear what they're, I'm saying but they're like oh Cass is fine man she's not she's not in labor like she's just probably over exaggerating so I feel a sharp pain and I'm like oh and she's like you okay I'm like yeah I just had a sharp pain and then again these contractions started happening again so I'm like do I measure my friends again what do I do but every time I put them in the contraction app and I think it like measures like four it's saying I'm fine and I basically just need to um yeah just get the hospital bag ready that's all the contraction app saying so I'm just thinking yeah I'm fine so um I me messaged Carl basically saying the contraction started again and around this was around say six and at around eight I started being in a lot more pain and they'd come more frequently so they went from 15 minutes to now every five minutes and I've called the hospital and they're like okay hun like so calm yeah no every five minutes but they need to be coming for at least an hour so I'm sure it's just nothing to worry about just you know rest go sleep blah 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 so I'm thinking okay cool nothing's wrong and like 20 minutes later it's getting more intense and as Carl comes in the room now I'm making sounds like woo like and Literally, my friend's son is literally, I, I know this new thing that kids do, watching a game be played on the TV. And he keeps looking at me like, what am I doing? Because I'm in pain, so I'm making sound effects. And he's looking at me like, is she okay? So my friend's just like, um, I'm like, I'm, I'm really feeling pain now. So Carl comes in and I'm like, can you get me paracetamol? Because this pain is getting severe. And that's what they said I can have. And then I'm like, I'm going to get in another bath. So I set the bath because I'm feeling more pain. So as I sit in the bath, I and Carl's gone downstairs, I feel this pain. 
pain, like stuff is coming out. And I'm thinking, what? So at that time, my one of my friends are messaging me and she's just had a baby. So she's like, Cassandra, if you feel like stuff is coming out, it's probably the water breaking. So I'm thinking, water's breaking. And she's like, um, but you're only in labor when you literally can't speak and you're in too much pain to walk. But I can speak and I'm walking. So I'm thinking, oh, it's not the end of my labor or whatever. As um, I feel this w w pain, like something's coming out, I'm like to my friend, no, I, I panic now, so I'm like, we've got to go to the hospital, we've got to go to the hospital. And she's a bit like, um, Cass, like, you're alright, just eat some chicken and potatoes. Like, I mean, she kept saying, eat some chicken and potatoes, just have some chicken and potatoes. And I'm just looking at this girl like, chicken and potatoes, you know how much pain I'm in right now. So, in my head, I'm thinking, she's had a baby, she's probably right, let me get in the bath. So I get in the bath, Carl comes in, and literally brings me the, okay, I forgot a part. So, just before he's gone, he's... Put some worship on and begin worshiping because i think he think, kind of realizes that maybe this is labor because of the pain i'm in and um he's worshiping and like yeah and then he's like um who's your birthing partner can you imagine that he asks me who's my birthing partner guys like my husband is asking who's my birthing partner so i like he literally starts laughing so fast forward now i've got in the bath and he's gone to the shop as he's laughing gone to the shop come back in and I'm in the bath and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing things in the bath so I'm even asking him, I'm like, can you see that in the bath? And he's like, yeah. But I'm, I'm not sure of what it is. So then um, he gives me paracetamol with no water, just a packet, like I could just eat the packet and I'm just like, oh, this is who I'm going into labour with. The girl who's saying, um, my friend who's saying, oh, would you have some chicken and potatoes? Just have a chicken and potatoes. Like, it's going to take the pain away. And my husband who's now saying, who's your labour partner? So... It's getting more intense and one of my other friends has now come to watch my friend's son so that we can go to the hospital because i put into the contraction app now it's f five minutes um did i tell you guys that i called the hospital again and they're saying that unless it's every out every five minutes for an hour there's no so she's like no if unless it's every five minutes for an hour then you don't need to come in so it's been every five minutes now for at least 25 minutes and i'm in pain and my friend's friend has come in and I'm thinking, okay, it's 25 minutes. My friend, my friend's friend, my friend's come in and I would like to her, Dan, what's this in the bath? She's looked in the bath and she's like, it's your show. She told me to get out of the bath and all I'm thinking about is creaming my feet. So I literally put on um, the, uh, what's it called? The nightgown and uh, I didn't get the dressing gown from Primark because I didn't have a right one. So I put on the nightgown and like a jeans jacket a small jeans jacket at that because my friend's like a size 8 and I'm clearly not size 8, I'm a pregnant woman. So I'm getting more pains coming and I'm starting to make noise now. I'm sounding like an elephant. I'm like, ooh, ooh. Like literally, I'm feeling pain now. And I put it into a contraction app and the contraction app is telling me, get to the hospital now. Like after I put how many contractions I'm having, because they're coming now every five minutes, intense and for longer. So we're going downstairs and she normally has a lift, but today the lift's broken and I'm walking down four flights of stairs. In extreme pain, down four flights of stairs. So we get to the car and like, I'm literally doing acrobats. Like, I can't even explain it. Like, one hand's outside of the window, one leg's near the, like, her, basically at the steering wheel. One arm's back with Carl. I'm holding his hand, I'm biting. Like, the pain went from zero to 100 real quick. Like, just like that. So, so there's a hospital that's really close to where I live and we have, okay, mind you, remember my friend said to me, you need to bring a hospital bag everywhere you go with you and your book. There's a book that you take with you to the hospital every time you go and everything, like your DLs and everything about you and your pregnancy is in there. I left the book at my house. So we've had to drive to my house and my house is right near a hospital. So I've booked, but I've wanted to go to another hospital, but I'm like, at this point, the pain I'm in, I'm like, just take me to that hospital. But again, my friend who, chicken and potatoes, yeah, is like, literally uh no don't worry because i know she thinks i'm not in labor she's just like let's just go to um let's just go to the other hospital and i didn't know but carl told me that between so while i'm like in pain going in the bath and coming out of the room them two are having the conversations and louise is basically like it's fine like she trusts me just wait she's not like she's just being dramatic because she's a first time mum and she's also talking about still talking about the chicken and potatoes and basically saying that we should bring the chicken and potatoes to the hospital because we're going to be waiting a long time and i'm going to need something to eat and um, carl gets goes to my house and as we get outside i'm having a contraction so i get out of the car because 
Previously, I've been stamping and it's been helping, so I'm stamping. It's not working. There's a man across the road. She's looking at me like I'm crazy. My headscarf's half coming off. My slicked hair now is an afro. Um, my night is on. I don't have a bra on. And I'm literally, like, the night is coming up. I don't care. I'm making elephant noises. I'm leaning onto the wall. I'm looking like I'm about to fall. Them lot are telling me to come back in the car. Car's in the car now, but I'm in so much pain. So I get in the car. I'm moving. Woo! Making sound effects like an elephant. And then... Um, she's going over humps and we're literally going through red lights, busting red lights, we don't care. Carl's like, bust it, come on, because we need to get to the hospital. I'm going blurry because I'm in so much pain. And I'm like, if this is not labour, they're knocking me out. Because I'm in too much pain. And I already said from the house that I'm good. as soon as I get to the hospital, I'm getting an epidural, I don't care. Like, yeah, everyone wants to do it the natural way, whatever, whatever, I don't care. Like, whatever can relieve my pain, I'm relieving this pain because it's too much. It's gone from period pains to a pain I've never experienced. So, imagine me now, picture this. I'm in the hospital, I've gone, Louise, my friend, has sent us somewhere else. So, chicken and potatoes has sent us somewhere else. But, I'm like, no, going through A&E because I need to get seen quickly. I get into a and &E, I see three people in front of me blurry vision and I'm like I need to make a scene I need to I'm in pain but I'm like I need to make a scene because these people are gonna make me wait and I can't wait so I start going Ooh, and then I lunge like full lunge into the wall and I'm lunging and I'm making noise and I'm just like they're like oh um, has her waters broke and as soon as Carl says no they're like first time mum then they're telling me like go around the corner no sympathy no empathy no nothing so Carl's put me in this wheelchair that they've given they haven't told him how to push it so he's pushing me in the wrong direction you know those wheelchairs in the hospital and you need to push them backwards he's he's being so calm but I can tell I know him that he's kind of panicking because he doesn't know where we're going we're in the hospital it's late it's it's quite empty and we can't see anyone so he's kind of pushing me kind of frantically not knowing we're going I'm in pain and just like rolling around on the chair and then we're pressing the buzzer no one's letting us in no one's letting Carl in so we get through now and I just see this woman and she reminds me of my mum black woman like an African lady and she's got like, a bit of accent but she just you know like you just feel comforted like I just felt comforted by her because she just reminded me of my mum and she had like it looked like she had dreads but I now know that Carl said it's extensions but I told you my vision was blurry there's another lady and she's just like Come on, Cassandra, sit in the chair properly, because I'm all over the place, full of the chair. She's like, come on. Oh, she's a first time mum, yeah. And they're like, yeah, she's fine, trust me, this is how they act. And I'm just like, I know what my pain is. So I'm like, I'm a first time mum, but I know my pain and I know my body. So I'm like to her, I'm, I'm like, just like, Wood. So she gives me gas and air, and I'm, I'm taking the gas and air. Oh no, does she give me gas? No, she doesn't give me gas and air yet. I'm like to her, look between my legs. And she's like, Cassandra, can't. I'm like, look between my legs. I'm getting angry now. So she opens my legs and then as she, as she opens my legs, something literally just comes out of me, whoosh. And then it's like a, Carl calls it like, like bag juice, like literally like water, like that bag water that you get in Ghana, rolled out of me, or bag juice in Jamaica, rolled out of me, and then popped and splashed. And that was my water breaking, but it was, a weird sensation like um i know this is a bit too much tmi but it was a nice feeling it was like warm and it kind of just relaxed me i don't know now like you know when you do that sigh of relief like i told you guys i know what's happening i'm in labor so i know that after the waters break the baby means it means the baby's coming so they put me on gas in there and they're like cast take small um like like breaths on it and do it between when your contractions come i don't care i'm not listening to that i'm taking it every five seconds shh, 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 shh. I remember it like yesterday, like taking it, and then I remember I was like, oh, so much pain. So I've gone, um, they, they've put me now, because this is this in the, you know the room where they check you? This is just in the room where they check me. So now they're like, they need to put me to a room, they're panicking, they're like, who's going to stay in the room? They're kind of having these conversations, and I'm just like, on the gas of there. So they put me on a chair, and they're like, we have to wheel you to a, like, to a room. So they wheel me to this room, but there's no bed in the room, because they did not prepared. So they wheel the bed in, like, two minutes later, I go on all fours, and like, they're telling me, go up the bed. Do they ask me, do I want to go up the bed? And I'm like, no. And they're like, Sandra, you have to comply. So why are you asking me a question? Like, does that make sense? You're supposed to just say, Cass, do it. So I literally, I'm in so much pain, crying, moving. But then I literally come out of it. And I'm like, you're asking me questions. You need to tell me what you want me to do. Like, <laughs> you know, when you go from like, I, I realized that people talk about pregnant women. I wasn't swearing or anything like that, but I was the sharp, like, I was, yeah, not having no nonsense. Whatever I say is kind of going at this point. So she told me, I go on all fours, I go up the bed, and she's like, you have to, you're going to push. Did you go to your antenatal class? 
no I didn't go to my antenatal class I'm like no so she like push so I'm like uh -uh. and she's like push like you need to go to poo TMI so I push again and then she's like hold it I hold it and then as I'm holding it I just feel a sensation and my son literally drops out literally drops out of me to the point where she didn't even have time to put gloves on like the baby drops onto the bed literally onto the bed so I can't film anything my friend kind of got some footage on her camera but it's too gruesome a bit for me to show on YouTube I'm not really wanting to show it on YouTube but literally I didn't have because I weren't prepared for this so remember going from me doing shaku shaku to me um chicken and potatoes and me seasoning a chicken then going to I'm like is it keep going blurry I hope not then from me from that me going to um now the baby dropping out like it was overwhelming and the pain is a pain I can't explain because it goes from pain to a place where you are not here you are it felt like I was in a supernatural place and I felt like all the way through my not I felt like all the way through my labor it was like didn't I tell you I'll be with you? Didn't I tell you I'll be with you? And that's God. Didn't I tell you I'll be with you through it? Because I literally didn't know how. I was, I was obviously pregnant, so I know I'm going to have to have the baby. But I was so terrified of this labor. And um, the fact that I got through it, I remember after that, like, there was a lot of blood. And I got off the bed and they cleaned it up. And then I sat on a chair. They put me on a chair. And I just sat there. And literally, every time they would tell me to like get up to do something, I had to use like supernatural strength. And I'd just like give myself 30 seconds and then be like, like a zombie over to the next place so I literally sat on this chair and they were like do you want to hold the baby I was like no I was too overwhelmed I heard him cry so it was James Corden and they said if you look at your partner's um vagina while she's having a baby it's like your favorite pub being on fire <laughs> so I was like to Carl yeah it's fine if you just stay on my head if you just want to stay on my head so um he didn't cry no like Carl doesn't if it's something's ex happy he doesn't cry for happy he, cr he will cry if he like very rarely he cries and um, yeah I haven't seen him cry I can count on my hand how many times I've seen him cry and yeah literally he didn't cry so he was just happy and excited and I was just overwhelmed like that's how I could I was in so much pain and the pain had gone now and the baby had come and the pain hadn't gone but I just was just tired and just overwhelmed because I went from texting my friend at 9 to having the baby at 11 26 like the last message I sent someone was at 10 30 so imagine that and I just had the baby at 11 30 11 26 so within an hour of texting from texting to now being in the hospital and just having the baby it was just a shock to my system and um yeah I just felt like God was there and had now you know showed me that he was there and I felt like my mum was there I just felt all these um, like feelings and um it could be the gas in there but I would say it was spiritual and then um I just thanked God I just started crying crying and even if food when I was about to deliver um when I when literally as I was on the gas and I was in so much pain and my eyes were rolling back in my head and everything Carl was saying I went to say something to him I went to say to him God's in the room but because I was so high and so tired I couldn't even speak I was like <laughs> so that's how it came out and then um yes yeah, so I just started crying and um yeah like Carl was just there and the baby, I was just overwhelmed and the baby was so beautiful and I know people think that everyone says it's about their child but no, he was genuinely so beautiful and he came out just looking like my little brother and um, so that was like, he came out at six pounds, um, six pounds one and just healthy and happy and okay. contained Carl's arms and they stitched me because I had a perennial tear and I think that was my most pain like I can tell you that I went, when they were stitching me I can feel that pain right now as I talk. You know, like when you can feel it in your nerve. Like that's how much pain I was in. And um, they took one hour to stitch me. I don't know why. I was second second degree tear. And I literally, they they gave me anesthesia. But I, well, as they was stitching me, it felt like I went to another place. And I was, as I was in another place, I was saying, when I come back, I'm going to tell everyone why local anesthetic doesn't work. And I'm going to be an advocate for the fact that local anesthetic doesn't work. I was sure of it. I'm like, they say that you, it works and it's pain. No, I was in so much pain. And yeah, but um, it was, it's a pain that, the labour was a pain that I didn't forget my contractions and I won't say that I forgot it, but I'd say that it goes from so much pain to the fact that the pain is no pain. 
that's the only way I can explain it. And I think if I'd got to the hospital one hour before, I would have been fine. Like, I would have... I, yeah, the gas and air would have took me, but obviously, all God's plan. And I literally came into the hospital 10 centimetres dilated. All the way through my labour, they were telling me, you are so strong, they couldn't believe it. I came to the hospital 10 centimetres, so I went to 10 centimetres, basically, all through the day I was actually in labour, and that pain that I was feeling was my pelvis and stuff opening, and I was, yeah, I did like a trooper. I didn't get to get epidural, obviously, because I was 10 centimetres, so all I had was gas in there, and yeah no one can prepare you for labor but i just say that one thing i did do was prepare my mind like i prayed about it and i was like i know it's going to be the worst pain i've ever felt but at the end of it, it's going to be a blessing and i feel like that's like life i hope i'm i don't know i think i'm waffling but i'm having baby brain because i'm so tired and i'm so tired but yeah um i just want to say that yeah is my labor and delivery story sorry that carl wasn't here to share the story with us but i hope you've you know enjoyed my story time and stay locked in i've got another video out for you on sunday and yeah you, you need to subscribe okay you need to subscribe and that's it really um i'm really tired so i feel like i'm waffling now but i love you guys i love all your comments i see all your comments the comments that you make um about the name i've seen so many names and about three of you've got it right i'm going to shout you out when we announce we do his naming vlog because we're going to do like an announcement a special announcement but yeah i'll shout you guys out who got it actually got it right a lot of you've been saying i know this is a name and you are wrong a lot of profits in our comments you are wrong okay but um yeah Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of our family. Love you. I'm going to now lay down and sleep, take this makeup off. Um, yeah, but see you again on Sunday.